Hello and welcome to episode 88 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Recording live as of right now from <laughs> Groveland, California, near Yosemite. Why did we choose this location? Because you wanted to record in a haunted hotel. <laughs> we wanted to record in a haunted hotel. Yes, we did. And we are in a haunted hotel, the Groveland Inn, famous for having a ghost named Lyle. Uh, no flea markets here. Uh, we passed by a thrift store. So before we start talking about our trek up here, Nick has a fun little game that he wants to do with us. Yeah, I did a little bit of research on the internet about Groveland before, I, before we made it out this way. And uh, at work, we do this thing called Kahoot. It's an online app that you can create like trivia with. So um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the, the game on the computer here. It's gonna show both Brad and Brandon uh, what the questions <laughs> are. <laughs> it's gonna show them what the questions are and then they're gonna use their phones to answer the questions. So it's a multiple choice game. Uh, there'll be four answers for each question. Uh, but the quicker that you answer the question, the more points that you get. Um, I think that's about it. Obviously, if you get the question wrong, you don't get any points. Oh. Um, there are only eight questions, so you got to make all of them count, I guess. All right. You have any questions? No. Nope. No. Nope. All right. So I don't know if, how Brandon, how savvy Brandon is with the video editing. Maybe you could possibly get this in here. To show like what the questions are i'll try to read them out as best as i can um so are you logging into that game number there yep crisis has entered and torment has entered you ready yep here we go The first question is, according to the 2010 census, what is the population of Groveland? It's over 9,037, <laughs> 666, or 601. Oh, man. Can you see okay? Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah, they both got it correct at 601, but someone took much longer to answer. Probably me. Looks like Christ is in the, <laughs> is in the lead right now. He answered more quick, uh, quicker. Next question. Uh -huh. What percentage of Groveland's population would Clayton Bigsby approve of? Do you know who Clayton Bigsby is? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what population would he approve of? 37%, uh, 99.1%, 90.2%, or 66.6%? They both got it correct at 90.2%. So obviously that white population, if you're not a fan of the Chappelle show. It said, mine says incorrect. Uh, it says two, huh. but, but got it right. Okay. Oh, no, you both got it incorrect. I'm sorry. I thought you both got it <laughs> correct. Okay. Well, they both got it incorrect. You guys both put uh, 99. 99 yeah. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> nice. All right. Now there's 90%. There's 10% of something other than white in this little town. Spaniards. <laughs> Spaniards. The hired help. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um... Just for reference, I, I think I remember reading that there used to be actually a pretty big Chinese population here, like during the mining era. Oh, that might be the Hile of Hell. Hell. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> All right, next question. 
The oldest continuously operating bar in California is in Groveland. What is it called? The Toolbox, the Blue Oyster, the Iron Door Saloon, or the Bella Union Saloon? And they both got it correct with the Iron Door Saloon. We had to went there today for breakfast. <laughs> Crisis is in the lead right now. So yeah, the Iron Door Saloon is like literally right next door to us. Um, so I read it's, they have to throw in the word continuously operating saloon. Apparently there are or, older saloons, but they went out of business for a while at one point or another. Uh, the Iron Door Saloon has been open since like 1870 something or other. But it's kind of a little interesting tidbit of uh, knowledge. It says I'm on a one answer streak. <laughs> Impressive. Oh man, get out of here, Steve. Next question. Mm -hmm. This area was renamed Groveland in 1863. What was the area's name before that? Big Oak Flat, Morristown, Casterly Rock, or Wankers Corner? Uh, one person got it right at Big Oak Flat. Woo! Do you know what Morristown is from? No. Did you see the picture that I posted? I, I posted a little picture on each one. I'm hoping that Brandon will be able to uh, edit it in. Uh, but it was a picture from uh, Evil Dead. And oh. Evil Dead was filmed at Morristown. There's a picture of Clayton Bigsby. And there's a picture of uh, the one about the saloon. There was a picture of Deadwood on there. Because the last answer was the Bella Union. Which was the, the bar that Cy Tolliver owned. Uh, Crisis in the lead by a lot. Next question. The Iron Door Saloon is appropriately named. The doors were installed in 1937. Why? They were total metalheads. Windstorms at the time knocked old doors off. Oh, that's a stupid one. His brain is squirming like a toad. That doesn't even make sense. Fire prevention in case oh. adjacent structures caught fire. Sounds like Crisis got that one correct. Yeah, a lot of... A lot of I mean, you can imagine a lot of structures have caught fire in the 100 plus years of the town's existence. And uh, that was one of them. And that was why they installed the iron doors is to prevent uh, fires from catching the place on fire or, or going aflame, I guess. Chioga High School is the lone high school in Groveland. What is their mascot? The Timberwolves, the Wildcats, the Demon Deacons, or the Knights? It was the Timberwolves. Oh. Did you see my the picture on that one? Yeah, it looked like a uh, wolf on Wall Street. Nope. Did you did you recognize the picture? It. it was a picture of Dennis Hopper on a phone. Oh, oh speed. And what was the the clue? Wildcat. That's how that's how Keanu Reeves figured out that he was watching uh, them. Because he said, "Oh, you tell that wildcat." Yep. Crisis is ahead 3,700 to uh, Torments 2,400. Let's go to the next one. Seven of eight. The Groveland Hotel has a sister property. What is the name of that property? Hotel California, Hotel Charlotte, the El Royale, or Hotel Monsignor? They both got it correct with the Hotel Charlotte. Uh, I think you got a locked up crisis because you can only score a thousand points. There's only one question left, but we'll do the last question anyway. Room 15 at the Groveland Hotel is haunted. What is the name of the room? The Hetch Hetchy Suite, Crisis, Lyle's Room, <laughs> or Torment? It is indeed Lyle's Room. They both got it correct. And Crisis is indeed the winner. All right. Um, where the heck did I put my prizes? That's the one thing I forgot. One moment. It's all for me. So we're next door to Lyle's room, uh, the haunted room uh, where Lyle will dim the lights if you're reading at night. He doesn't like women's cosmetics on his dresser and will knock them off. And there's other stuff he does too, but he's not a an evil spirit. He's more of an old timer and he likes to do mining. So while I was at Evo uh, in July or August or whenever the heck it was, uh, there were a lot of vendors there selling like uh, stuff they made themselves, not just selling like stuff that was like mass produce, product, uh, produced. I got a couple of stickers. Oh. One is of Ryu and one is of some Dragon Ball Z faggot. I don't know who that is. It's probably Goku or something or Vegeta. 
That's Goku. That is Goku. <laughs> I'll take Ragu. Then Ragu gets uh, Goku. So that's your prizes. All right. So we've been busy. <laughs> Segway. Nice. Uh, so we haven't done any recordings. Uh, FYI, I know um, the last episode only had an audio recording. We did do video and we did do flea market stuff, but from the magic of my daughter, uh, she installed <laughs> a computer virus onto the profile that had all the info. She was using something called Chromium and not Google Chrome to do her search. <laughs> and after about two hours of work, everything shut down on the computer. The profile was locked. Her stuff was safe because she did everything through Google Docs, but that profile is gone. The treasure hunting for nostalgia profile is gone. So uh, I created a new profile. I'm going to have to install all the drives again for the capture card and stuff, and then we'll have video again um, with included gameplay. We're not doing gameplay today because she had to use a computer again for a school project, so we're just recording on a laptop and then we'll get it up. So that's what happened. Uh, what have you guys been busy with? Uh, well, I've been making, although you might might not notice it, uh, I've been making a lot of weight loss bets with uh, friends and coworkers and things like that. Um, if you've ever seen a movie called um, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, it's a documentary about this guy from Australia who basically advocates for going on juice fasts um, for like months at a time. And he, he was a guy who had taken like multiple medications uh, just to stay alive because he was so overly obese and his doctor basically told him you know if you lose X amount of weight we can just take you off all these medications and you'll be fine you'll live a much more comfortable weight so after years of eating like shit uh, now he has the proper motivation to, to eat properly and he, he basically goes around America the United States of America showing each That's person fucking right Pat Riot America, <laughs> Pat Riot. <laughs> Love to talk about that. Um, showing everyone like the value of going on these juice fasts, even if it's for a week at a time, even if it's for if it's for a month rather than you know two or three months. Uh, and there's some success stories, and uh, it's really an interesting movie. Uh, of course, you want to make sure you have a doctor to consent with it to make sure that you're in good enough health to go with something like that. But I've been doing. I've been trying to do that. I, I don't go for months at a time because it's just way too difficult for me personally. So I try to do it during the weekdays, and then on the weekends I try to enjoy myself. As you can see, I'm enjoying a. It's basically a Jack and Coke, but it's actually Bullet and Pepsi. Same difference, but a little bit more potent. Um, so that's a lot. That's been occupying a lot of my time because just making the juices themselves. I mean between cleaning out the juicer itself that probably takes 30 minutes yeah. kind of cutting up all the fruits and vegetables takes 30 minutes put actually juicing them probably takes like 15 20 minutes so you know that's like an hour and a half of your of, of each day that you're doing that so that takes up a lot of time um but other than that um i've been watching a lot of netflix netflix has been kicking ass lately with all the shows they've been putting out they just put out ozark season two um my wife and I started watching Atypical, even though I already watched through the whole. I already watched the whole freaking thing. It's amazing. I highly recommend it if you if you have a chance. Uh, they just put out Making a Murder se season two, Daredevil season two just came out, or season three actually, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I haven't actually gotten the chance to watch that yet. And the new season of House of Cards came out, even though a lot of people were kind of down on that because Kevin Spacey's not on the show anymore because he did some things. He just likes to touch the little boys wearing cowboy hats. What's the big deal? <laughs> <laughs> no. So that, and then uh, the last thing I guess I could, I'll, I'll, I'll say is um, the King season started back up. I split King, uh, King season tickets with what we just call Maddie G, right? Yeah. <laughs> with Maddie G. Um, so I go to a lot of those games. In fact, we're watching the Kings Lakers game this evening. We're going to order some, uh, not pizza guys, I keep forgetting, Pizza Factory. Mm -hmm. We're going to order some pizza from Pizza Factory and watch the Kings Lakers game tonight. So 
Uh, watch a lot of basketball. I play DraftKings pretty much every day uh, for basketball. That's fun. Play a lot of poker. That's that's basically life. And of course, all this stuff my daughter does as well. Yep. What are you doing? Um, just working. It's heck of tight. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to talk about anything else? Not really. All right. Uh, let's see. I picked up my first online game, and I have PSN Plus now for three months. And that game is called Dead by Daylight. Brad actually got me into it. It's real fun. We'll go into it later on. I've been working a lot. I've been. Uh, I took on more responsibility to do business checkouts. Basically, they update systems, change them around, and I have to make sure that they're working. And sometimes I have to work on the weekend, sometimes I have to work at 10 o'clock at night, but hey, it's work. Gotta make uh, that money. Yeah. And then I also, when I'm there by myself, because I'm like the only one there, I like to play practical jokes on people. So, uh, like for instance, there is this one lady who has a big jar of Tootsie Pops, and I made a joke saying, one day I'm just going to come in and lick all your Tootsie Pops and then tape them up so that you don't yeah. notice it. <laughs> so I had an opportunity to work at 10 o'clock at night on Wednesday night. <laughs> so I didn't open up her Tootsie Pops. I didn't lick them, but I did tape them all up. And while I was taping them up, she was always concerned about finding, finding the Indian shooting the star. And when I was <laughs> taping them up, because, you know, on the Tootsie Pops, if you find an Indian shooting a star, you supposedly get a free Tootsie Roll or right. Tootsie Pop. The who makes Tootsie Pops? Nestle. It's Tootsie. Tootsie. It's just called. Oh, Tootsie. they're a company. Yeah. So Tootsie had said, no, we don't do that. But real re, re, realtors, they or retailers will give you a free one if you bring in an Indian, and if you send it in, Tootsie will send you a bag of Tootsie Pops. So when I was taping them up, I found one. I was like, holy crap, that's an Indian. So I left that one alone and told her about it that she that I found an Indian. Um, what else? I went to Pumpkin Nights. It's in Auburn, California, I think. I don't know where. Rockland, maybe somewhere out there. And it's just like displays of all these carved pumpkins. See, they got me. <laughs> I thought every single pumpkin was carved was a living pumpkin. But there's tons of fake pumpkins that are just carved. Styrofoam, yeah. Yeah. So I was very disappointed in that. Uh, so much so that I will probably never go back until they introduce, like, a haunted area for, like, <laughs> adults where it's scary. Because it's mainly for kids. It's pretty cool to walk through, and they have, like, fog machines. And it's cool, but too far for me to go back unless they do stuff that I want to, that I would like to see. Uh, but other than that, yeah, just uh, chilling. So I, th I think we should talk about like our Halloween adventure since you kind of went into that. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, I would like to ask you about your Tootsie claim. Yes. <laughs> Have you verified that or did you just like look it up and like the whole, the retailers will give you a free Tootsie Oh, claim? I looked it up, yeah, I looked into it. And Tootsie claims that they don't, they're, they're not supposed to. Uh -huh. Because on Tootsie Pops, there's other designs. Like, there's like, like Sailor, there's like a pirate ship. Right. And random things. So it's just something random. And it was just, I think, just stemmed from the schoolyard. And the fucking little kids went in and lied to the grocery store clerks. <laughs> like, here, just give me a free one. They're like, all right, whatever. It's the only opinion. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, because I, I, I've heard that before as well, um, but it feels like I see them, not that I eat Tootsie Pops all the time, but it seems like every time I have a Tootsie Pop, there is an Indian shooting a star yeah. in there, so it's like, pretty just, common. Mm. I just don't know how valid that claim is, but I guess it's it, it sounds like it's just they're doing it because they're humoring the children. Or yeah, something. and the fucking adults that take advantage of it <laughs> for a free Tootsie Roll. Nice. Um, so, Halloween. Uh, I guess... I'll, I'll start. Um, so my initial plan was to do a Sheamus uh, costume. Okay. Sheamus, like the WWE wrestler. Wow, he's that big now. Huh? Or not that big, but he's not gay anymore. He's actually pretty cool, man. Okay. He's, a, he's a heel. He's in a tag team with Cesaro. They call themselves The Bar. And they've been uh, champions a couple times. 
Uh, but he comes out like he has a real distinct look. Obviously, he's pale as fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's one thing that sets him apart. But he also has this huge beard. Sometimes it's actually bearded, or excuse me, braided, not bearded. Uh, it's braided, and then he has a mohawk a lot of the time. And you know, he's got bright red hair, so it, it really sets him apart. It'd be easy to kind of like duplicate that. Like if you had a huge red mohawk and a bearded red or braided red beard. Uh, you'd be able to see, see even if I'm not as pale as Seamus, you'd know what look I was going for anyway. But my sister, so I, a, a year or two ago, I tried to do a mohawk for like a, a dance, like a Girl Scouts dance for Rosa. It was like a daddy-daughter dance or whatever, and it was supposed to be 80s themed, and I was going to try to do a mohawk. And I sprayed like two bottles of Aquanet in my hand, and it just would not stand up. So I was asking my sister, who's a hairdresser, like, what do I need to do to get my hair to stand up like a mohawk? She said, oh, you can't do it, your hair's too thick. So I went away from the shameless idea, and I was not going to do anything at all. But I was looking at myself in the mirror one day, and I had my hair down. And I was like, I kind of look like a wizard right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, to me, the, the coolest wizard in movies, at least in terms of look, is so- Sodomon from uh, the Lord of the Rings movies. So I was gonna like dye my, or not dye, but like spray my hair white, spray my beard white, and get a big old white robe and a cool Sodom on <coughs> staff. Uh, unfortunately, it was so late, like I was like days before Halloween, I couldn't come up with all that. So what I did was I went to like some Halloween store and I bought like a brown robe that was actually designed for like a monk costume. <laughs> And I took like, there's like a little collar thing that goes around that's supposed to look like a monk. I just kind of ripped it off. And uh, I got like this cheap staff that kind of looks like a wizard staff. I didn't get a wizard's hat. And I think that was my flaw because everyone kept guessing that I was like Jesus or Moses or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) A couple people said that I looked like a caveman. And then, wow. And then one person said I looked like a bear. I don't know why a bear would be carrying a staff, but they said I just looked well, like a Well, they meant the gay person. <laughs> <laughs> All that. <laughs> so, I mean, it, in the end, it was it was fun. And once I told people that I was a wizard, they're like, oh, okay, I see, I see. I actually uh, sprayed my hair all black. I was going for, like, the black mage look. Um, it, was, it was fun. And I went out trick-or-treating with my daughter who... Uh, she wanted to be dressed up as a ice cream sundae, and my wife like made some unique things. It was really cool <coughs> that what she did. Uh, but yeah, after about an hour of trick or treating, my daughter was done. It was a good time. We just trick or treated her on the the block and had fun. So you're telling me Radagast, the brown mage <laughs> with the caked on bird shit in his hair, isn't cool looking? No, he's pretty cool looking to me. But <laughs> I don't know what cool is. So for Halloween. I just wanted to go to work dressed comfortably, so I threw on a, um, a pair of pants and I threw on my American flag shirt. And uh, my boss was like, wait, you're not dressed up, you're just wearing casual work. And I went and got my Make America Great Again hat and put it on and, and my American glass. I said, Pat, Pat Riot, Patriot Report for Duty. And she was like, oh, if you're doing that, then I'm a mom. I like, all right. So I was, I was Pat Wright, and she was a mom. Because she was dressed like a hobo, too. Uh, for Halloween. He was dressed like a hobo. <laughs> for Halloween, I put on... I, I finally decided to hand out candy this year. Naja wasn't going trick-or-treating, and I just wanted to stay home. So we watched the 2017 version of It, and ha- decided to hand out candy. We only got three, I only had to open the door three times. Only like two kids, two kids, and then like 15 kids on the second and last one. And that was it, no one else came. And there was this fucking cholo guy with a mustache. <laughs> fucking trick or treat. I was like, oh man, you're a grown boy. And I gave him a handful of candy. <laughs> and I was like, trick or treat with a mustache, huh? And he's like, yep. So like, All right. So that was it. That was the night for Halloween. You got ditched for Halloween by both Logan and Sam. Yeah. I remember you asked Lo- Sam if he wanted to go trick or treating. You're like, no. No, he I didn't want to go trick or treating. And then Logan took the costume that I br- I bought. I bought a, a shape mask, the Michael Myers, mm-hmm. and a knife. And he he took it to trick or treating. And I was like, oh, I was going to use that to scare the kids. But <laughs> I just stayed in and I watched um, Silent Hill Re- Revelations. 
So that was fun. So our trip up to here, I wanted to talk about because that was <laughs> a, I mean, a two and a half hour drive, but what a fucking adventure that was. If you guys have never been up here, which I never have, and you get motion sickness pretty easy, make sure to get some medicine, some Dramamine, because <laughs> holy shit, these roads. <clears throat> uh, we, so we decided to leave uh, from my house and go to the Black Oak Casino for dinner. They had a seafood, five-star seafood buffet, um, more like two and a half. No, that crab was hell. Of well, that's because you guys are crab people. Crab people. Uh, I'm not a crab eater, but I did find stuff there to eat. They had prime rib. They had uh, rolls. They had mashed potatoes, fried cod, shrimp, tartar sauce. They had um, gravy and desserts, and of course, snow crab dungeons and a ton of other shrimp stuff and crab stuff and. I was satisfied after like a plate and a half and got some dessert. Brad and Nick just continued to eat crab until they couldn't crab anymore. <laughs> Let's talk about the fucking checkout. Check it. Paying at that place? <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Took three people to split a check. <laughs> they, you don't pay up front. You pay after the fact. And we said, okay, can we just split the check three ways? The lady looked like she was going to have a fucking meltdown. It looked like she'd been working for 80 years of her life. And she didn't know how to split a check. They call her fucking nerd boy 5000. He's like 25. And he's sitting like pompous. So, oh, do this, do this, do this. She couldn't figure it out. They had to call the head honcho from upstairs. She came down. Could have been wearing a headdress, but she wasn't. Um, fixed it in like two seconds. That whole process took about 15, 20 minutes. And no joke. It really did. It took a long time. And on the way to here from the casino, it was like well, a half hour. We were missing a part in the casino. Did we? I thought that was GOTM <laughs> worthy. Oh, the daughter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that for GOTM. So, uh, on the way from the casino to here, the girl had to end, is about a half hour, but it's only like 15 miles. It's because you're going 20 miles an hour. Around these curves, it's like the sidewinder going up to the the Overlook Hotel, and I was already getting sick up there. I was fine after, like it didn't hit me too much, but for someone else that was a different story. Because I was in the back. Yeah, so we were driving down what Ward Ferry Road, <laughs> and then we turn on Old Ward Ferry Road, <laughs> and then okay, Murphy Road. Remember that fucking oh, road? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, out of nowhere, there's this huge, beautiful house. Caught pillars. Looked like a mansion. Lit up like a Christmas tree. Lights everywhere. Mm-hmm. No fucking furniture in the house. You know, there's a fucking house. There was a, like, it was 10 o'clock at night. There was a boy standing <laughs> at the window looking out at us. <laughs> With no furniture, no, no one else in the house. And I, I was fucking scared. I said, what the <laughs> fuck? And Brad was, I think, had his eyes closed. Yeah, and Nick, Nick kind of glanced over, but he was, um, like, too busy driving on the windy roads. And he was like, oh, what is it? And then he looked, and he kind of caught a glimpse of a figure, but I saw that shit for what it was. <laughs> and I was like, that's a fucking demon. Oh, man. So... I want to go back to that house, but I don't want to drive down the fucking. Down that road again. I don't want to drive down the fucking windy roads. I don't, because you know, get sick. So right after Murphy's, I think the demon put a spell on you, because, Brad, like behind me, after I was freaked out, I heard, <clears throat> and I thought he was like trying to pretend to scare me, like making ghost noises, and then I, heard, I was like, are you gonna throw up? And then. Nick stopped, and we were like, and then he opened the door, and he threw up all his crab, or oh, half his crab. <coughs> and I was like, why the fuck didn't you say anything? I couldn't. Stuff was coming up. You couldn't, like, hit or anything? I mean... I was in shock. Oh. <laughs> so he, he throws up, and then we go a little bit further, and then... <coughs> I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go again. <laughs> Nick <laughs> stops, and this time Brad throws it. There goes the rest of the crab. It was like, like 
four like liters of crab meat. <laughs> oh, <on man>. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much crab. It was good going down though. It was so good. Oh, and you had all the butter with it to make it come up easier. It didn't feel like it was coming up easier. <laughs> so then we finally got here and I was cold as fuck. It was like less than 40 degrees it felt like. And we were, you know, late arrivals, like late arrivals. So we were, you know, we had to find the key because they left it under the porch mat because they close at 8:30. Find our room, which is next to Lyle's room, the haunted room. And after that, we uh, had some drinks and watched South Park until it was bedtime. And I fell asleep. I mean, I didn't fall asleep. I had to come lay down because I was still spinning. So we will be getting some jarring from the general store across the street. Hopefully they have medicine. I don't know if the medicine has reached this area of the world or not, but I mean, hopefully. It's a curvaceous place, so I'm sure they have some jarring. Oh. So what have you guys been playing video game wise? Uh, me personally, I, I, I still play a lot of Rocket League. Uh, I've been playing that for months now. Um, I back, Brandon, you mentioned you've been on PS Plus for about three months now. I pretty much got on PS Plus the instant that I got my PS4 because you need that in order to play online games and that's the only way that you really want to play Rocket League is online. Um, they have single player campaign? It's not a campaign. I mean, you can play with like a, a computer. Oh, okay. It's just you're playing a match against a, a computer. Mm. Um, yeah, a very simple game. It's basically soccer with, you know, small rocket boost cars. It's it's so simple. It's so silly, but it's so much fun. It, I I spend hours playing that game. I I'm not ashamed of it. It's, if you ever have a chance to play, I highly recommend it. And uh, also, if you want to play, look me up. Hit, hit us up on Facebook, I'll play with you. Um, but aside from that, um, my family and I are going to Disneyland in about a week and a half now. Uh, so I've been trying to get my daughter into Kingdom Hearts, which that's the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Uh, I got a few Kingdom Hearts shirts to, to wear to, to Disneyland. I played through Kingdom Hearts 1, shoot, I don't know, like maybe 9, 10 years ago. Probably more than that now. Yeah, way more than that now. It's more like... 14, 15 years, I guess. Um, and I never got around to playing the second one. So I started playing, or excuse me, I downloaded from PS Plus, uh, it's called Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. And there's like six different games on there. Um, the one after Kingdom Hearts is called Re-Chain of Memories. I guess Chain of Memories was one that was uh, created for Game Boy. Game Boy Advance. Um, so they re-released it on PS two or something like maybe ps3 has rechain of memories and it's, it's included in this package and i liked it the music was good it was like visually appealing but the fighting style was just so awkward to me um maybe if i played it enough and i got used to it i'd like it but uh it was basically like a beat em up type game kind of like the the first kingdom hearts game but it had an added element in there where you had to like collect cards and play them against your opponent and so you'd have to be simultaneously worrying about the strength of your card versus the strength of your opponent's card and uh, you could combo cards together and your opponent could combo cards together and if your opponent had a higher strength then they would get the attack on you and all, all, all of this is going on while you're like button mashing basically because you're, you're, it's a beat, beat em up game essentially and it just it wasn't fun. It was just way, it was way over complicated for me. I got through like the first couple of stages and I was like, this just it lost my interest. So I decided to move on to Kingdom Hearts 2, which has a fighting style very similar to the original Kingdom Hearts, uh, and it's a lot of fun. You start off, um, it's you start off in a weird place. It's called like a Traverse Town or Twilight Town. It's called Twilight Town. That's what it is, and it's like an alternate reality almost from the Kingdom Hearts universe. Um, you start off playing as this character named Roxas, who is essentially like a, uh, it's like an, like a, like I said, it's an alternate universe, so it's like a doppelganger almost for, for Sora, who is the main character from the Kingdom Hearts game. Um, and you have to play through his little story, which takes like three or four hours. It is, it's fun. There, there are fun mini games in there. You learn how to basically 
fight everything, you learn how to buy things, you learn how to equip things, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but eventually you, you get to play as Sora, you go through the, you know, the different worlds, just like you do in the original Kingdom Hearts. Right now I'm in the, it's called the Land of Dragons, which is like the Mulan storyline. Um, the shitty thing about the game, Gummy Ship. Uh, still? The Gummy Ship is back. Uh, so that was the one thing I didn't like about the original Kingdom Hearts is you had to like collect little bits and pieces throughout your gaming experience to build this gummy ship which would allow you to go from the different uh, gaming universes essentially um, and this one however there's like they provide with like blueprints for different gummy ships for you and I just I, tr I really wanted to understand like how to build my own gummy ship but the instructions were like literally 30 pages long, if not longer. I was like, I'm not reading all this. This is just mm -hmm. ridiculous. I mean, I could go down, I could go sit down and read a book and I'd be more entertained than reading this fucking gummy ship instructions. So why, why would I want to do this? So I just went ahead, used the blueprint, click X, it built my ship. I went through the little phase where I had to travel through some stars and some obstacles to get to the, to the other gaming galaxy or gaming planet, whatever you want to call it. And that was that. So as far as I'm concerned, the gummy ship can suck a dick. But all the other stuff I, I really enjoy about the game. So right now my party is um, Sora. I got Goofy with me, and you can you can basically sub out Goofy or Donald with the with the character that you're playing in at the time. So I have Mulan in my group. Uh, she's called like Fall Mulan or something like that because she's obviously posing as a, a male to to get into the army. If you guys are familiar with yeah. the Lost yeah. right? Okay. <laughs> the first tranny trick. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's where I uh, stopped playing. I'm in the Land of Dragons. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm hoping to really binge it over the next week or two so that I can finish it. Just so that I can say that I finished it before we, before we got to Disneyland. So that's that's what I've been playing lately. Uh, I've been playing a few games. Uh, Dead by Daylight, like I mentioned. Uh, it's an asymmetrical horror game. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I just hear people say, it. oh, this is an asymmetrical <laughs> survival horror game. <laughs> All right. Well, it's four people, four uh, survivors, have to survive against a killer who's the fifth player, and it's completely um, player-driven, so you need five live bodies to do it, so that's why you play online. I like to play a survivor. I like to... Uh, see if I could outsmart the killer. You basically have to. Uh, get, there's a, just one map, and you have to go around the map and uh, start up generators. There's five generators, four people working together. Once you get the five generators open, you could open up the exit gate and then finally leave. But the killer has all these powers, and you have powers to counter their powers, and it's real fun. I like it. Uh, what do you have to say about it? Well, I started out with. Uh, Friday the 13th. Oh, I yeah. That first. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't like, like about it is you were basically forced to talk to the other players because if they saw you weren't playing with a headset, they turn on you and kill you. Mm -hmm. But in this game, it's basically the only way you could do, use a headset is if you're playing with people you invite. So I like that aspect to it where you don't have to talk to people or converse. Or it's not part of the game mechanic. Mm -hmm. So I like that's why I stopped playing Friday the Thirteenth because I hated playing with people online. And in the the actual developers of Dead by Daylight have went on to say that they actually did not want communication in the game, like that makes sense between players, uh, not only like in real life but also in game. <clears throat> they're saying they're saying that each solo survivor is in this hellish world. And they have no way of communicating to the right. other people, so uh, they wanted basically the entity who's the creator of this world needs to feed off of players and killers' emotions to survive. And they, the entity, finds it easier to kill people when they can't communicate with each other. So he has the killer doing their bidding. The killers range from licensed killers like uh, the Nightmare, which is Freddy Krueger. The Shave, Michael Myers, The Pig, which is Amanda from Saw Movies, and Leatherface, uh, The Cannibal from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then they have their other non-licensed survivors that they created themselves. The Trapper, who's like a knockoff of Jason Voorhees. The Spirit, who's like a Japanese schoolgirl school who 
uh, was going to get killed by her father, but sought revenge and almost killed him, but got taken to be a killer. So it's real cool. Check it out. I know it, it was on sale for like 11 bucks. Um, and that's what I've been playing. I've also been playing Dragon Quest 11. Just when you think that game's about to fucking end, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm 150 hours into it, and I'm, I think I'm near the end, hopefully. Uh, but who knows? A fucking other world may open up and I might have to go there, but I don't think so. I think I'm, I'm actually almost on level 99. I'm on like between 95 and 96 on all my people. So, real fun game. If you know anything about the Dragon Quest games, you know they go on forever. I didn't think any game could go on longer than Dragon Quest VII, but this one does it, and it's real fun. There's forging, uh, you have to gather materials throughout the world, you can buy materials to create tons of different weapons. Uh, swords, great swords, knives, boomerangs, whips, spears, stabs, heavy stabs, axes, claws, all for your people to wear. Then they have different armor, different accessories. So right now I'm just collecting all the re recipes and trying to get all the everything created so that I could just finish the game. I don't want to say too much because there's a lot of spoiler stuff, but it's fun. Is that all you've been playing is DVD? Dead by Daylight, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we this is kind of like a horror-themed episode since it's near Halloween-ish. So we have a top five for you that's kind of... Grim, top five ways you would not want to die. So that what that's what we have for you. I would like to go first because I know my list is way weaker than your guys. <laughs> All right. These guys are horror fans. I like watch horror movies maybe once every couple of years or so. You guys watch them like probably Daily. multiple times a week. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have any too many creative ways to uh, that I would prefer not to die. Do you guys have you guys decided who wants to go second? We'll just go like this. Boop. I got sounds good. Um, remember that movie Titanic? Of course. Remember how Jack dies? Yeah, by being a fucking bitch. He could have pushed Rose off the door and been <laughs> kept alive. But guess what? You're like, no, no. Oh, so you don't want to die from a, a, heart, a heartbreak? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's actually what killed him. There's probably something else that killed him. Oh. Icy waters beginning to drown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hypothermia, freezing to death. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that would suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my number five. <laughs> what do you got? Huh? What do you got? My number five? Yeah. Um, why do you look at me like that? <laughs> I'm waiting for you to go. <laughs> well, Nick just like started saying the last of his and they're like what you got like yeah. you were saying no, quiet. That, that was all i had okay <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit more for my other ones but yeah. that's it for my number five stock answer um i need to be i need to die by venom like a rattlesnake bite well i think you would fear the snake more than the venom well yeah but i'd hate to be you know get bit in the leg and you can't do anything about it if you're like in the middle of nowhere right and you're stranded Mm -hmm. If they die slowly by then, it would suck. Yeah, it would be very painful. Um, mine is kind of stock, my number five, being burned alive. Um, I hate I hate burns. I hate fire when it gets near me and I get all blister skinned. And that's mine. I, I would just hate to be burned alive. I know they say when you get burned alive, it's kind of euphoric. And that's why they oh. did it a lot in the medieval times. It's euphoric? I don't know. Who just, the fuck said that? I just I made that, that up. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, they say when you get burned, your nerve endings die, and you go into shock, and you don't really feel it. No, you, I bet you fucking feel yeah. that shit. Because you remember when Freddy Krueger out burned alive? He was screaming and hollering. I was like, oh, that looks fucking painful. So, burned alive. <laughs> uh, that was actually my number three. Mm -hmm. um, so, when I think of getting burned alive... You guys watch Game of Thrones, right? Nope. You, okay, Brandon has it, but Torment has. Um, you remember the scene where uh, Stannis Baratheon's daughter gets burned alive? Yeah. Oh my god, that was one of the most heart-wrenching, devastating scenes I've seen in all of TV history. And that's what I think of when I think of burning alive. Um, so you mentioned that, like, 
you lose, like your nerve endings die, so you essentially lose, you don't feel pain essentially. Mm -hmm. But I, what I have heard is that you can smell like your body cooking still, <laughs> uh, because you're, you're, you're right, you, you survived through that. And what I, what, I wrote, what I read when I was doing what little research I did on this um, is that you don't die because like, you know, you lose your flesh or whatever. Basically, the fire uh, kills any sort of fluids in your body. <laughs> so you die because there's no more fluids left in your body, so there's nothing to circulate through your system. <laughs> That's fucking devastating as all hell. So, I mean, first there's the pain uh, of, of obviously being burnt. I, just, I mean, just imagine, like, you touch a stove and you pull away real quick and it yeah. fucking hurts like hell. And it still hurts, like, even, like, a day or two afterwards. Yeah, it, is. it hurts for a long time. And then, and then imagine not being able to pull your hand away and imagine that being over, all over your body. That's just... Sick and and then when you when you're screaming, you have to breathe in. Of course, fire follows oxygen, so it goes into your fucking lungs. <laughs> so that that was my number three. Um, and like was... I said, Stannis Baratheon is kid so That's my sick. fucking number sorry, one. Sorry, spoiler. Yeah, that's my number one. Being burned alive. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> All your liquids cook. You, you become cooked on the inside out. Is well, that really your number one? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Fuck that shit. Let me do my number four just so we're yeah. in sequence. Did you have anything else you want to say about being burned no. alive? Or burned to death, I guess? Uh, my number four is asphyxiation or choking to death. Or Do you consider drowning as being asphyxiated to be the same thing? Yeah, because you, when you drown, you die because of lack of oxygen. Yeah, that's I agree. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that, that we were on the same level. So... I mentioned like imagine like being a, being touching a stove and like not being able to pull your hand away. For asphyxiation, what I imagine, because obviously I'm not dead, I don't know what it's like like to be asphyxiated or choked to death. Like if you get, if you fall on your back, like you take a back bump and you don't know how to take it, and you get the wind knocked mm -hmm. out of you, and you like, for those few seconds it takes to get the get your breath back, it's like you're, you're panicking. Yeah. You don't know what to do. You can kick. You can you can try to scream, but you can't even scream. It's just like the scariest thing that you can ever really experience and just imagine never being able to come out of that state and then you die it just seems so fucking miserable to me so asphyxiation choking drowning whatever you want to call it that's my number four i've only had the wind knock out of me once and i was in fourth grade on the jungle gym or on the uh, playground at school we, there is a stairs that led up I've to been the hearing about this fucking story for years. <laughs> Ever since fourth grade. There's stairs that lead up to the uh, slide. But next to the slide, there's a, a monkey bars. So what people would used to do is go up the stairs and then jump and grab onto the monkey bars and swing. Well, skin plus water plus metal is never good. <laughs> so it had just finished Ouch. raining. And I, what, what, who got hurt like this in Home Alone? Remember they jumped on to the ladder thing and kept going? I think it was Joe Pesci. Yeah. yeah. And so I climb up the stairs and I jump and I grab, but I slip and I, and I go complete parallel with the ground and boom, fall on the ground. I couldn't breathe and I was like, what? I thought, what the heck is happening to me? And then I was finally able to breathe, but I was like, fucking never again. I never did that shit ever again. That's fucking scary, dude. Because there's nothing you can do. It just You just have to hope that your body kicks back in, you know? Yeah. Remember, you made it on top of a jungle gym in, in kindergarten? <laughs> yeah. Mom, call the fire department. <laughs> well, it was the monkey bars. And I climbed my way up onto the monkey bars. And I looked down, I was like, holy shit. I'm like seven feet above the ground, eight feet maybe. No, it was like four feet. <laughs> <laughs> so I was up there and I said, there's no way I'm coming down, Mom. Call the fire department. And she was like, and I was scared to grab onto the bars and fall because I didn't think my arms would hold me. And I was going to fall and, and hurt myself. But eventually I was able to get down. <laughs> and then we went to Bo's Barbecue and I got to play World Heroes. Nice. Uh, Arcade game. Uh, I think you're up for four. Yeah. Uh, de death by disembowelment is my number four. Oh man, <laughs> it's a pretty bad way to go. I thought about you listening that as one of mine. Um, did you have anything else you want to say about? It? I don't want to put no. it on your parade or anything. Um, but I don't know. 
there has to be something else that kills you. Like, what is it that essentially kills you when you when you're killed by disembowelment? I think the loss of blood. Probably yeah. right. So I mean, I felt uncomfortable choosing that as a point. So check this fucking shit out. I was watching World's Dangerous Animals, and this one motherfucker who's fucking stupid was in Thailand, and he was on an elephant tour, and he was like, you know, we were watching the elephants from the from the tour, and I said. And I saw an elephant all around the distance, and he was beckoning for me to follow one. So I left the tour and followed this elephant. All of a sudden, I was surrounded by four elephants. <laughs> a fucking elephant picked the guy up with with his trunk, put him in his mouth. But, like, say this is an elephant's mouth. He, this is his head, this is his legs. And he bent him sideways, and his gut spilled out of his oh, stomach. Oh, shit. The guy... He survived. He crawled back to the tour with his guts out and survived to tell the story. Fuck. So, so you can't be disemboweled. Really. Yeah. So <laughs> fucking stay away from Thai, Thailand elephants. Fuck those guys. Yeah. Don't <laughs> follow a Thailand elephant. <laughs> Fuck the head. Fucking no Muay Thai or something. Uh, my number four is also drowning, but mine is kind of specific. It's drowning. Well, in a vat of Coca-Cola Classic. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the stuff I, I, I was going to miss out on. Because <laughs> you don't want to get that shit in your mouth. <laughs> so you just sink to the bottom and just wait for death. <laughs> like, so you, there's a lid over it, so like... Like, you're in the coat, you're, like, you're swimming up, all of a sudden you see the lid covering, uh-huh. like a huge tub. You're like, no, and then it closes completely, and you're like, trying to break through, but it's steel, and you're uh-huh. just in the coat, you're like, fuck, I just died while in <laughs> fucking coke. I just died. <laughs> You'd rather drown in coke than, like, in a vat of feces? Oh, sick. No. With feces, <laughs> at least, you could kind of climb. Now, if it's diarrhea, then it's like... <laughs> Sewer water? Oh, that might be bad too, but <laughs> Coke's got the edge over the sewer water. Oh, so. yeah, man. <laughs> nice. And then you did your number three. I did my number three. Your number three. Burning to death. Um, disembowelment. Well, my number three was drowning, except in a vat of Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it fucking was. No, it was just drowning in general. <laughs> Uh, my number three is death by pressure. Now, when you're in the um, like on a cruise and you get tossed overboard for trying to do a mutiny or something, and then a fucking squid grabs your leg and starts dragging you down to the depths of the ocean, oh, can you imagine? Like you're like, okay, I'm gonna fucking drown, but all of a sudden your your lungs start bursting, your eyes start popping out of your head, and you just fucking die from being dragged to the depths and can't find your body because it's probably eaten. Uh, so that's, that's mine. Damn. Can't find your body? <laughs> In the fucking bottom of the ocean? Oh, you mean people won't find your yeah. body? Yeah. Oh, okay. I won't have a corpse to beautify. <laughs> Remember that was uh, pressure sickness was in the abyss. Yeah. Yeah. It's called the bends. I, when I was looking into this a little bit, there, um, one of the categories was called uh, not pressurized, it was called decompression. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you? There was one story of someone in a situation similar to the abyss where they were like, you know, so many miles under the ocean or underwater, and um, it was a pressurized unit, and somehow the, the area that they were in became, you know, depressurized, and they, they said it went from nine atmospheres to one atmosphere like within a second oh man and like essentially they just kind of exploded so like and they were still there like when when the uh when they found them they could just see like their spines were like ripped out of their their bodies and it was like oh my god all because all because of pressure yeah so this just i didn't know how to properly word it in my top five but that would definitely be one <laughs> it sounds awful i don't know if you guys have heard this but there's a a a free, I, I barely remember the story, but there's a free dive place where people yeah, dive that, down. That's what I was going to put my number three as. Uh, they they dive down and without oxygen tanks, mind you, 
and they have to maneuver through a, a little gateway and, and they pop up into this beautiful cave. But the thing is, is you get turned around when you're down there. Because it's all pitch black. Yeah, and so you don't know where you're going. These people fucking do this, and they're fucking crazy. They dive down, and it's like a two-minute dive into oh. the... They come And there's dead bodies down there. Yeah. Oh, sick. They bring lights, but they uh, it doesn't really help because if you kick up sand, then it's like total blackout. You don't know which way's up and which way's yeah. down. Damn, that's And you crazy. can't navigate. Yeah. That's freaking crazy. My number two, were you done with yours? Mm-hmm. Uh, my number two is starvation. I'm a, I'm a fat man, so it would, from what I've read, you can survive up to like 60 days uh, without food, but for me it'd probably be like 100 days or something <laughs> like that, which just makes the punishment that much more severe. Oh. <laughs> so like that's, that's a fear of mine, you know, starving to death. So I, I looked into it a little bit like basically when you're when you're not eating your body starts trying to find energy sources from from other regions of your body so obviously it's going to attack your fat um it's going to start attacking your muscles it's going to attack basically anything that it possibly can it's going to attack your immune system so what i what i've read is that like obviously you'd still you'd feel hunger but you stop feeling the urge to hydrate your body so you wouldn't feel dehydration so what I've read is that a lot of times when people are, so say you have like a source of water, but you're going hungry, you're starving to death, you stop feeling that urge to drink water because your body doesn't, it, it can't even feel that urge to, to replenish its water source. So a lot of people just die of dehydration. Um, but if you manage to get through that, like I said, your immune system starts to go which means like any number of random diseases can get to you and basically just end your life like even a cold or something like that could probably kill you so that's going to be my number two starvation it's vague because there's any number of ways you could die which is just that make it that much worse to me plus like i said it'd just be a long drawn out process and that just sounds miserable to me plus i like food and i would hate to go without it that's my number two my number two is being um, in one of those trap rooms. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You, you know how the the ceiling comes down at Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what it is. Being crushed by a ceiling with not with spikes, because that might get you before the single. Yeah. But feeling all your bones pop and your oh, eyeballs and everything. Yeah. Uh, just pop by the ceiling, and then <laughs> like you hear your blood and organs trickle out. Like like on the collection. <laughs> Yeah, that, op- that opening scene. <laughs> oh, they yeah, being that. crushed to death by a ceiling. Ouch. Ouch. Demon wall. Demon wall, yep. Number two on my list is any form of torture. Iron Maiden, the rack, being drawn and quartered. Uh, Crucifixion? Oh, man. Any t- a fucking sicko in the corner coming to torture you every five days and then healing you back up. Oh, that's messed up. Oh, man. What is that stuff? Uh, what is that called? Like, uh, shoot, I found it when I was researching. It's like an old, like, uh, Moorish or uh, torture thing where they, like, put you out on a boat and they they make you get gangrene and they, like, fill your pores with, like, um, like food and things like that, so that bugs will come and ta- attack you. I can't remember. What I didn't know. even fucking know about yeah. that shit. That was a real life torture. I have to look it up. Fuck sure. that. Damn. Remember, Sorry, go, go ahead. I didn't remember on like, um, Sinister Two with the kid with the rats? No. Did you see Sinister yeah, Two? Yeah. At the 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 final kids video. He put, he put the people in church down on the ground. Oh, and yeah. And he put rats on their stomach and cover it with metal bowl That's and put a right. hot coal on the bowl so the rats would dig down into the yeah, stomach and get away from the heat. Oh, man. I was hoping to find it in time. I'll find it eventually. Are, are you done with your number two? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. I'll, I'll look it up while you're doing it, too. But. So my number one, because... My greatest fear is spiders. It's got to be a spider bite. So uh, I, I looked into spiders and like how many of them can actually kill you. And it's actually a very small number. Mm-hmm. Um, like in Cal- we live in California. In California, we have our two most like dangerous to human spiders. They might not be the, be the most venomous. Because I've heard that like 
the uh, Dalai Lama supposedly have like yeah. really potent venom, but their fangs aren't large enough to bite us. But anyway, the most dangerous spiders to us as humans are the black widow mm -hmm. and the brown recluse. Yep. Um, but what I've heard is that really there aren't many, if any at all, documented uh, deaths from a any either of those bites. Like the brown recluse will make your skin get all fucked up and yeah. it's gonna hurt like a bitch. Um, the black widow might make you like throw up and get sick and all that shit. You need to go to Australia for good yeah. spiders. That's where I'm getting. <laughs> Uh, so what I have read, there there are trapdoor spiders which yeah. are dangerous, but what are really dangerous are called funnel web spiders, mm -hmm. yeah. which are basically trapdoor spiders. They hide in like little crevices, and they build trapdoors or funnels essentially, and they cover it up so you don't know that it's there. But if anything gets within like the, the, the you know how a spider builds its web, if if like a bug just flies by and touches its web, it's gonna attack. So if anything touches anything in that vicinity, it's going to come out, it's going to fucking bite the fucking shit out of you, <laughs> and it's going to inject like the most venomous thing that you, you could ever experience. Like there are dozens, if not hundreds, of documented deaths that have occurred from uh, funnel web spiders um, just on a yearly basis. Like I'm sure over time there's been thousands, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to Australia. They, they, they hide in the ground, no matter, there, there's no telling where they might be. If you go out into the forest or the jungle or whatever, you can step anywhere, there's a good chance there's a fucking funnel web spider there, and they'll kill the shit out of you. In Australia, you could die by land, air, or sea from <laughs> fucking venom. You have snakes climbing trees and jumping down on you. You have these fucking funnel webs. You have the blue ring octopus, which is a <laughs> little fucking octopus yeah. this big. But will kill you in a bite. Like, <laughs> how how are Australians still alive? Fucking Steve Irwin. <laughs> yeah, he got died from a manta. He got died. <laughs> he got died. I'll get died. Uh, I I found what you were talking about. Scafism. Yep, that's it. So uh, it says per the reliable web source Wikipedia, scafism, also known as deboats is an alleged ancient Persian method Persian. of execution. The word comes from Greek, scaphi, meaning anything scooped or hollowed out. Mm. It entails trapping the victim between two boats, feeding and covering him with milk and honey, uh -huh, and allowing yeah. him to fester and be devoured by vermin. The primary source of Plutarch's Life of Atraxerxes II where he attributed the story to Setsis, a notorious suspect story. It's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> and supposedly, like, you live, like, while those bugs and whatever are feeding off of you because it's just not enough to kill you, and eventually you die of gangrene. But it's... Gangrene, though? <laughs> gangrene, though. <laughs> now, this is an inside joke. Uh, Nicholas and I went to... Uh, what, Eastern, Eastern Penn? Yeah, it's called the Eastern State Penitentiary. Yeah, in Philadelphia well, with our friend Aaron Gur Aaron. Sorry. <laughs> Can't use his last name. Aaron. Beep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they had a, uh, it was a real cool tour. Uh, that place is also haunted, and there's people that break in there at night and see ghosts and stuff, but uh, and they had a tour, and you had an a audio tour led by Christian Slater? Who was it? It was like some... I don't remember. I don't remember who the, the narrator was. I think it was Christian Slater. Some uh, sure. some, some uh, distinct name. And... I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, and they won't... And they to said that uh, prisoners were told not to masturbate because it caused gangrene. <laughs> <laughs> so in one of the cells it had a whole... Who was it? Buscemi. Oh, Steve Buscemi, okay. Uh, there was a whole uh, article in this one cell about getting gangrene. And so, <laughs> whenever gangrene comes up, we say, gangrene though? <laughs> and that's because you can get gangrene from touching your pet <laughs> In the 1800s. <laughs> and your number one was fire? Yep. Mine was dying of a fucking airplane crash. I mean, I know you die instantly, but just the descent, knowing you're going to die. I don't, it's probably like a two-minute free fall. You're like, what the fuck am I going to do? I'm just going to fucking shit my pants and die. 
That's all you're gonna do. Can't do anything else. They won't allow parachutes on the plane. I don't know. I, at that point in time, I may try to fucking open the the door or something right when they're about to crash and try to jump out. I don't know. I mean, I'll try something other than sitting there in the fucking seat and like, oh, get them when you die. Nope. Tie okay. your pants and shirt together and make a parachute. Something, man. Do you guys have any honorable mentions? I could have sworn that it, this came up in conversation yesterday. I thought I could have sworn you were going to say Andy Pilato style. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide by jumping off a bridge. <laughs> kind of like the airplane crash. Similar. Yeah. To me, the airplane crash is worth because usually you're with like family or friends or something like that you know uh-huh. they're gonna die too <laughs> yeah whereas with suicide obviously you're yeah. just killing yourself and supposedly you want to die yeah who knows <clears throat> no other honorables so we also want to talk about who would you want to speak with living or dead if you can does anyone um could be fictional, maybe, like Alexander the... No, he was real, huh? Alexander the Great was real. Yes. Uh, who was that fake Russian? A fake Russian? Rasputin? Was he fake? I don't know. Well, regardless. <laughs> um, I just I just chose my grandma. I would like to talk with her if she were... Um, you know, she's dead, so I would like to speak with her and, you know... Catch her up on things. Uh, always great talking to my grandma, so that's who I chose. For me, um, yeah, I couldn't think of anything too creative, although uh, when we were talking, we just mentioned, make, well, I mentioned making a murderer, mm-hmm. and I'd like to speak with Teresa Hallbach so that I could know exactly who killed her, if it was Steve Avery or uh, Brendan Dassey or anyone other than those two, because those two are currently serving time for killing her. But that's just kind of like, you know, I guess that's, I don't really watch crime documentaries or crime shows that often, but making a murder for, for whatever reason, it's just made really well and it's really interesting. So I'd like to know if he really did kill her, because it does, the evidence does seem to say that he probably didn't kill her. Mm. Uh, but other than that, I mean, obviously I'd like to speak with my dad. My dad died about a year and a half, two years ago. For one thing, I don't. I don't know how he died. Mm. <laughs> the autopsy didn't really show anything. I mean, it showed heart failure, but he was riding his bike home from work, you know? Mm. To, I mean, and he had told me like a, a day or two before that he wasn't feeling well, but I mean, you know, people say they're not feeling well. He wasn't like, he was in his 50s. Yeah. You know? Just because you're not feeling well doesn't mean you're on the brink of death or anything like that. So I would obviously like to speak with my dad, if for no other reason, just to know how he died. But also the same thing with my Uncle Sam. Remember Sam Jones? Mm. Um, he died really young too. He was probably about the age that I that I am now, which is sad to think about. Um, and he was he was basically like a brother to me. I'd never ha- I didn't have a brother growing up. I had a sister who I love very much. I love you, Cassie, if you're watching. Um, but yeah, he was basically my my brother uh, growing up, and we fell apart kind of in the the last few years. He went he went on a mission as a Mormon. Even though deep in his heart, I don't think he really believed in any of that shit. Um, I'd like to speak with him to see, you know, how how passionately he did feel about his Mormon religion, and like I said, just I would really like to know what happened. Like, how how did he die? Because I've heard people say that it was an overdose, but nothing has ever really been confirmed. And it probably had to have been an overdose, given how young he went. But it was just a really sketchy situation. Mm-hmm. So those are my who do I want to talk to who's dead? Are you Nicole Brown Simpson? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Not Ron Goldman, huh? Not the Nicole? Yeah, she's the main one. Okay. <laughs> Why is that? Do I mean, we see? already know he fucking did it. Do you know? <laughs> Brandon's like a racist. Yeah, I'm fucking hilarious. I, I look at fucking evidence. I look at evidence. And when I see that motherfucker put on a latex glove and then try to put on a glove, come on now. It won't go on. It, it, was, it, it won't go like on. Yeah. <laughs> you saw Cuba Gooding in the, in the documentary. Yeah. Juice. Yeah. Juice is loose, baby. But uh, he 
got his comeuppance. Uh, they took away his Heisman Trophy, so I guess that made it right. He finally got released, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. did. Well, he... He stole something, and that's what he ended up going into prison for. Like, I think it might have been his husband. Yeah, I think he tried to steal it back or something. <laughs> and then he served, like, a, a quite a long time in prison, but I think he got out recently, like, in like the last year or two. Yeah, it was. It was recently. But, yeah, those are good where you're going with that and where what I said is probably what I'd want, most want to know. Like, if people died under mysterious circumstances, like, I would like for them to come back to tell us like how the fuck what the fuck did happen and just make sure that the people who are being punished for that yeah. are deserving of being punished for that what if you were a necromancer is there anyone that you would bring back to life oh man. now now it's always gonna have a drawback so you know if you bring them back to life <laughs> they're gonna be fucking demonic <laughs> So I don't know if I would want that responsibility. Um, I think it would be a selfish act. Like I could see it doing on pets because you could kind of, you know, manage demonic pets. Uh, I don't know, can you? Of course. Pet cemetery? Well, that's because they're fucking pussies in that town. <laughs> I don't know if you have a little fucking cat that's, you know, trying to attack you. Uh, get in and check. Now the mistake was made when he was like, oh, let me bury my son there. Oh, what do you think's gonna fucking happen? Uh, <laughs> Comes back to life and he tries to fucking kill you. <laughs> Little me kill Hughes. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if I want that power. But for our jerk of the week, do you guys have anyone other than the uh, communal, cumulative jerk of the week? I don't know if that's a word, but I don't. No. It means so. Together. Cumulative? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you want me to tell the story, Brad, since um, I think you saw the bet, the most of it. Oh, man, we were trying to find the buffet last night in the casino. Because <laughs> there's no signs that say buffet this way, buffet that way. It was like, here's the cafe, here's the fucking kid town downstairs. And, <laughs> So we were standing by the elevator, like, should we go downstairs or what? Then all of a sudden we see this dad and probably six-year-old girl come up the escalator. From Kid Town. From Kid Town. And all of a sudden she, like, tripped and fell off of the escalator. Fucking went boom. <laughs> she fell. The sound is actually what drew my attention. <laughs> I saw her fall and I just started busting out. Yeah. I, I kind of muffled my, my laugh, but Brown was like, huh! <laughs> and they were only like three feet away from us. I think that's the only reason you reacted, actually. Otherwise, you probably have just kept walking. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. And then, and so what does he say? He turns, he looks down at his daughter and say, "What is it? What the fuck happened? What the fuck, fuck happened to you?" <laughs> and she, you let, you made me fall, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and then so she fucking stormed out of the casino because the, the it's the elevator was laughing at her. yeah the elevator the escalator and the door was all in that area and she stormed out <laughs> and he had to like run after her she probably got hit by a fucking car or oh, something man. but man that was the funniest fucking thing so i think there's like everyone's a, a jerk of the week in that scenario for laughing <laughs> for making her fall for blaming her dad for being a little bitch and running I mean, everyone's at fault everyone had their hand in it yeah what about you for dropping the n-word at dinner i get when there was like a group of black people right next to it oh they were they were cool they were they were legit with us they were cool actually <laughs> yeah we were, and you wasn't you didn't say the n-word like because you wanted to say it you said it then appropriate context. Right, it was in context, uh, quoting a dear friend of ours. Uh, <laughs> Who did not use it in the appropriate context. No, he did not. <laughs> uh, Do you want to tell the story? <laughs> uh, no, no not, not this time. But, um, yeah, but it was funny because uh, the group of black dudes were there and we were there. And... Uh, <laughs> And we were we were all enjoying the buffet. <laughs> we were all sitting together, non segregated. Yeah, and <laughs> enjoying each other's company. Uh, and then uh, they were talking about like what were they saying? Like where are you gonna put it or whatever? Yeah. And then Brad was like in the butt, uh, like in the booty. And then the guy was like in the booty. <laughs> so it was good, it was a good time. Uh, they were high as fuck. Yeah. Um, they were eating. They were rapping for the uh, prime rib cutter. 
and dancing. It was it was a good time. Wait, our waitress dropped the fucking ball at that buffet though. She was fucking on it. She was refilling our drinks. She was taking our plates away. Uh, she was doing what a waitress should. But then, uh, probably about half half hour into the meal, she had started showing up. Stopped showing up. No refills. No stacked plates. Or like, guess he's not getting a fucking tip. Oh man, man, that's what happened. Um, I I tipped by the way. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh, I I I tipped too. Guess who fucking didn't tip? J O T W. This guy right here. <laughs> Quality service is what's deserving of a tip. I'm Mr. Pink and fucking. Ah. Uh, uh, Reservoir dogs. Reservoir dogs. <laughs> Why I got a fucking tip? Why I got to put in a dollar? She she earns her wage. But I'll tip for excellent service. What else we got? Is that it? I think that was pretty much it. That was it. So this is our spooky haunted episode. Oh man, I thought I turned. Uh, so we are going to, what else we have planned for the day? We might play some Dead by Daylight. We might watch some YouTube. We're watching the Kings game. Uh, ordering some pizza and coming back to Sacramento tomorrow. Drinking some gray gold. No oh, man, some gray gold. No gummies though? <laughs> no gummies. Let's get this fucking party started. <laughs> All right, so that'll do it for episode 88 of Treasure Hunting for us all. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting. Oh.